record, but it is recording now. We are recording and we are going to start our episodes as always on the count of three. One, two, three. All right, so th- this is my friend Jen. This, this is oh, Jen Media. I went to school okay. with Jen. Yeah, we, we graduated together. And she's, and um, she was like one of the stars. Oh, I just remember what this means. Oh, there's my Emily. <laughs> that was great. Um, I hope that when you guys are saying that I'm gonna love this episode. Don't hear you, John. Can't hear you. I can hear you. No spoilers. I can hear you. And like no spoilers, you will see. Oh, is that why you're saying don't you can't hear me? Can, can you really not hear me? Yeah, yeah you we could hear you. Went, you had went out on mine. I didn't hear you. I'm gonna switch to data really quick. Oh, there he is in the credits again. God bless America. Tasha, you need to turn down your TV. My bad. Yeah, we don't want to get in, into any rights issues with. Metallica t shirt. Somebody has their speaker uh, on, and I can hear their TV. Oops, sorry, that's me. I thought I muted myself. <laughs> Great band. 
Thank you for policing that, Sherry. <laughs> I don't like, you know, doing stuff like that. It was just a little distracting. Oi, oi, oi. Is this like a DAR meeting? Yep. I'm so funny. That was a funny joke. I have a feeling we're going to be talking about this afterwards. Oh, yeah.
Can you imagine Taylor going? <laughs> no. <laughs> Is it Rory worth more than one cow? Apparently not. <sighs> that would be fun. Is that painting behind them a John Wayne Gacy painting? Do you see that on the chair? That's what it looks like. That's a pillow, apparently. And, but the, but the, yeah, yeah. that's the that's evil, pillow. the evil clown paint, uh, pillow. There's yeah, apparently a Twitter account for that pillow. There's no joke. That's oh, terrible. Like, yeah, this is the funny part. Why would he say no? See, he doesn't totally strike me as somebody who would flake out. I haven't really seen that from the character yet. So it seems weird that he's, she's saying that to him. You haven't seen enough. Yeah, you have no comment. Oh, yeah, definitely. All right, all right. Oh, yeah, Dean is in this show. Hence <laughs> my teeth. One thing I find interesting is all the characters are as musical knowledge knowledgeable as the writers of the show. There's no characters that are like not into good music. Or at least it feels that way. Except for the guy that she went out on a date with. <laughs> oh, right. Right, right. Todd. <laughs> yes. Louise only owns two CDs. Yeah, I feel like it's supposed to tell you something about the character when they don't like the same kind of music. You're like, not hey, John, pay attention to this episode, this part. Sorry, whoever's talking.
Oh, yeah. This is what I was hinting at on Twitter. <laughs> you missed the part where he said Jiggy. For all you all out on beanbags, I have two Oxford English dictionary. Those, that exact Oxford English dictionary, in case some of you didn't know. So I love, I love the cameo of the Oxford English dictionary. Wait, do you miss the part where he said? Do you have the one with the word jiggy in it, like this one? Yeah. Of course. You missed the part where you said jiggy, and it was cute. How can you not like this guy? This guy is awesome. I'm keeping my mouth shut. Me too. Because he likes Ramstein. He's cute. That's all I'm saying. My boyfriend had my two-year-old daughter listening to this stuff. It's actually a love song. It. it it's you, you hate, you hate, you hate me. No, it means you have. It's actually a, a, what's the word, like a homonym where it sounds like two words sound the same. Oh, right. It's like a, it's got double meaning. Got it, got it, yeah. yeah. I love that Miss Patty moment. She really is a bad dancer. By the way, those coffee cups that they're using, those are the coffee cups that we drank out at, that that we had at craft services when we were shooting the show. (laughs) This is funny. I'm sure if you look closely in the 154 episodes, you'll probably spot one of those coffee cups sitting somewhere because we always had them in our hands and left them on set. And every once in a while, somebody left them somewhere and then they had to redo the shot.
I think it's cute that they're matching. Look at his laptop.
this is an actor who um, has multiple roles on the show. Oh my God. Yep. I was going to say, I feel like we see her later on. I feel like I've seen her before. I, I, I couldn't really place where I have seen her. I could tell you, but it might spoil it. Did she say a Shakey's? Like a Shakey's yeah. pizza? Yes, that's what it sounded like. Would she know what a Shakey's pizza was? That's the joke. It's that there is no Shakey's on the East Coast. And the place that they're at is the same place that Rory and Dee went to the dance. Oh, I was going to point that out. Look at you, Sherry. The best. I'm here, aren't I? <laughs> that's funny because it's, that's, I don't even know if that was in the script because it's, all, it's like a line said way in the background. The dress that the oh other boy. folks wearing looks just like my wedding dress.
Wolf. Oh boy. She is trash. Oh, yeah. Team Dean representing. Well, that was uncalled for. Ouch. That comment from Livy is one of the most uncomfortable lines of the whole series. Yeah, definitely cringeworthy.
I feel like distributor knows everybody's secrets. I always want to correct the musical fact in that particular quote. Steve Perry, solo, not Journey. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yes. Oh, my gosh, yes. Oh my God, that's ridiculous. <laughs> that's the hat from the first episode. I love this. I have a feeling Mary and I are going to talk about this episode a lot. I'm definitely going to talk about this episode. Well. For some reason, Emily is really reminding me of Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz with this outfit. Did you ever notice when, when something is not what she expects, uh, Emily, when she thinks that maybe there's some kind of connection there. Like when uh, Lorelai says, you know, she wants to hang and her eyes kind of light up a little bit. There's a little bit of warmth there where you almost for a second, you're like, ah, there's she's shocked. Well, really quick, see, really oh, quick before we dive too deep into discussion, let me open up the couch because <laughs> I know I have some folks out there that are eager to jump up here and chat with us. Couch is open. Oh, by the way, little tidbit. I'm not going to stay too long. I probably will stay till like probably 9.20. Just saying. Um, uh, this was a fun episode. Uh, highlight of the episode for me, without a doubt, was the scene between, Rich, well, was Richard's monologue, essentially. I mean, that was towering. It was so good. What about the compact Oxford English dictionary? Oh well, I mean, of course, I love my. I mean, I hope that I hope that that this, that that dictionary has more cameos than just that. I hope that that wasn't the the only one that you that you are all were talking about. Um, because I I love my Oxford English dictionary. Um, no, the uh, the for me the the that stuff with Richard and Emily was just so fascinating. It's so interesting to see such a large man admit insecurity. Yep. I thought it was 
pretty interesting um, because there's there's a scene in in a later episode of the later season uh, where Richard kind of explains like Emily's world and kind of like the etiquette that goes on in the DAR and stuff. And so he sees it as frivolous. And then to watch this scene and then be reminded of, of that, and Emily was like, oh, like what's the big deal? I think she saw that little monologue as, as frivolous because she thinks like, oh, Richard is a smart, successful man. Like, there's nothing that he can do. And he's just like, I'm being out, like, you know, like, I'm being kicked out or whatever. Like, I'm being ousted. And so it's interesting to kind of see, like, what they see as frivolous um, in their own world together. It was, so, such a, it was such an interesting scene, the scene between, like, there at the, the ball with him and and Emily, um, I, I just, it's just not something, I, I feel like that's just not a scene you often would see in television, you know, two, two elderly characters, um, given sort of the, like, center stage, all of their problems, and yeah, I mean, it gives us so much insight into Lorelai and, and her life and all of that, but it also just feels like such a, like just a wonderful coloring of that particular corner of the Star's Hollow world. You know, the, the world of those characters. Um, it was just, I, I just thought it was, it was a very pow powerful, very emotional scene, um, but just also just really delightful to see. I love how Emily is basically like a, uh, she's a professional wife. And I feel like this entire show is her trying to prove that like, she's not worthless. And even like going into the ball and like making comments about how things aren't perfect. Like she could do it better because she's not worthless. And I just feel like that's an ongoing thing with Emily. For sure. For sure. Tasha. Thank you. Um, so, <laughs> all right, choke on a pretzel. Um, you okay? I'm good. I'm alive. Um, so I think, I mean, I've seen this series countless times, and not this particular episode countless times, mainly for the last bit of episode. Anyway, another point. Um, I think it's very interesting um, with the dynamic of Emily and Richard, because, like, obviously they love each other so much. They've been with each other. 30 some odd years now and they were like together throughout like college and stuff like that so they have that foundation and stuff like that but you kind of really see like how much like how much of their world are completely separate like yes they love each other they have things in common but when it comes to like their lives and stuff Richard very much has his world which is like suits and going over like contracts and um traveling and things like that and then um emily has her world of teas and luncheons and balls and the dar and um the symphony and things like that so it's very interesting to see their dyna dynamic because sometimes you think like why are they married they are two completely separate people with two obvious different worlds but at the same time like um they also do work because I think that's just like how things were back then um and you'll kind of see like in the later episodes either of this season or even like the later season. going to spoiler territory here no I'm just saying that their dynamic is interesting that they have they're two completely separate worlds they work well he comes from that world I mean his mother is of that world so he is really a part of her of what her world is it's just that he is a traditional working man so well, yeah but it's just interesting to see like the way that they like have their separate lives but they also have quite a bit in common so I like I like seeing their fight in the beginning because it really shows how much Emily and Lorelai are similar in the way that they kind of poke and prod and the way the way they argue with the men in their life is very similar to sarcasm and all that kind of stuff 
It's and a lot of work. Go ahead. I was going to say, and wasn't it adorable when Richard turned to Lorelai and said, she never listens. She's never listened to you. And Laura's like trying to defend her mother without actually being like, I'm not getting this. Krista. <laughs> yes. Um, I don't know if John heard because he was talking over. I think he kind of yelled about Dean. But um, Emily said that line to Lorelai, like after... Um, after Richard and Emily had that fight, and then Lorelai and Emily were watching Rory come down, Emily said to Lorelai, that should have been you. And then that's, that's after that is when she said, nothing worked out the way I planned. So it's oh, like, no, oh, I, heard, just... I heard it. I heard that line. Okay. I heard okay, that line. Okay. My, 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 I may have said that, I may have said that at a different, like, because our, 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 uh, our videos aren't perfectly synced up. So oh, I, right. when I when I spoke, it may have actually gone over that line in your video, but it didn't go over that line of mine. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah Sabrina. So was, <laughs> yeah. Sabrina. Sorry. Sorry. You're like I do. I always forget to, to clap, so I apologize. But um, yeah, I was just thinking about the fact that she said, um, that Emily said that she is on this board and that board and so many different boards and as someone who you know I've been on like an associate board and which is like kind of being on a junior board it's for young people and now I'm on like a board of directors of an organization and it's not like a full-time job but if you were on like four or five different boards it can be like a full-time job and sometimes people if it's like a fancy enough thing with uh you know they're paid to do it as if it's a job I am not paid to be on the board that I'm on, but um, so I wanted to think about that and, and just mention that she actually does a lot of work. We talk about her being like a professional wife, but it's so much more than that because if she's doing like all of this nonprofit and philanthropic like board work, you know, for so many different organizations, um, she's got to be pretty busy on top of, you know, running the household. Definitely. I'm that's a clap for you, Sabrina. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, feel like and... for, I, I feel like um, in this episode, this sense of of relevancy being an important sort of important theme for the for the Richard character, and it got me sort of thinking about about how much Emily does, like how much how much is Emily's life being led by feeling relevant at this at this stage of her life or is that just something unique to Richard because he's still so wrapped up in his work but is any of this like DAR stuff and needing her granddaughter to to you know be a part of this thing is that in any way like similar to what Richard's going through or is Richard really experiencing something unique that that Emily couldn't possibly understand well I I feel like you know Emily in a lot of respects feels like she's a failure in some respects you know with, with how Lorelai turned out um and so I, I think in this episode, we're maybe seeing a couple of parallels that we're, we're really seeing how she feels like, you know, she wasn't successful in some aspects of her life and how her daughter um, chose to live her life. And Richard right now is feeling some failures at, at work. So I think maybe there's, they're playing some parallels there. And like, so uh, I, I think Emily is trying to put so much importance on this event because I think she feels like if she gets it right with Rory then that somehow erases yeah, so that what happened in the past like what I'm like kind of what I'm getting at is like it, in that line that she has where, he, where he's like you know telling her like you know that, like I lost this account or you know or, or they gave this account to somebody else and she's like well you'll get another account you know like how Emily like that's sort of the way Emily operates, where it's like it doesn't, she doesn't really get the point. 
Yeah, well, it's more like she do, it doesn't phase her because she knows that she can get something else. If, she, if this doesn't work, she'll just get something else, right? But she lost so much, you know, in regards to her family and Lorelai and whatnot. Um, and it's interesting that that's her perspective on, on that with, with, uh, with Richard, that she's sort of like, why, why does it matter? Just, just get something else, you know, just, just, you know, get what you want. And he's saying like, no, it's over. Like, don't you see, this is like the beginning of the end. And she, she just doesn't view that, view it like that. You know, she doesn't view life like that, even though there are so many things that have like, you know, in a way sort of also have failed in a similar, in a similar fashion for her. She still sees them as like, well, no, I'll just throw, you know, I'll just, I'll throw this, this thing for, for, for Rory. I'll, you know, now I have Rory here in my life. I can do what I couldn't do with Lorelai. I'll do it now with Rory. You know, that's, that's, you know, that's going to be my, my, my new account, so to speak. Um, considering I'm not going to be here for too much longer, um, and I know we're still kind of talking about this, so I'm not sure how much longer people want to talk about this particular part. Um, can we talk about either um, the whole flirtiness with Chris and Lorelai, or that could just be how they are? Um, yeah, can we talk about that? And how like she kind of seemed a little bit bummed when um, he mentioned that she that he has someone. Well, he flirted well, with her. If well, let's has, talk about the fact that he spent the whole weekend flirting with her and never mentioned that he has someone. I think this is where I think that's where we are, get though. some of our resistance to Chris, John. Yeah. What about the fact that she kissed him and he didn't he didn't pull he, away? He, yeah, say, he didn't pull away. He didn't I think pull that's away. how they're always going to be with each other. Though. That he's living with Sherry until after the kiss, after the the whole weekend of of flirting and saying, "Oh, the good old times," and and this and that and leading her on and then it's like kiss or flirt all weekend kiss and by the way I'm living with somebody and it's interesting that Rory knew and Rory hadn't mentioned it either I'm surprised Rory didn't mention it when she saw her parents dancing at Miss Patty's but maybe Rory is like we've talked about so kind of young and naive and maybe wouldn't pick up that there was some tension there so I well, think well, especially in the light that the last time they were together they had sex well, yeah. yeah. Well, but, I, I'm I'm cute. I I, I want to pick up on that, Rachel, um, because okay. let's say that let's say that he had that he had let let her know at the very beginning of the episode. How, how much do you imagine that that would have changed his personality and his interactions with her? Like, would they still have been joking with one another, making little quips, doing all those things? That feels to me like very much like just the dynamic of the two of them more than it does feel like flirting. Of course, if you don't know he d that he has another person in his life, then of course it could feel like flirting. But had he told her there at the beginning, I can't imagine that he would have that he would have curbed all of that behavior. I think he probably would have made the same little jokes and the same little things that you know she finds charming, etc. Is it more that she would have, wouldn't have engaged him? Absolutely. And she looked up, oh, well, how far is Boston and this highway? Mm. That I think right. it got her wheel turning of, hey, he's, he's stable. He's got this car. He's got, he still has a leather jacket. He still looks good. He's still charming. But he's got these, he talks about being stable now and how he, he loves it. And so I think she could have protected herself emotionally and not done the research. How far is it to Boston? And, and remember in season one, he asked her to marry him and she pointed out that he wasn't stable and all that kind of right, stuff. Right, exactly. Well, I and think he like, became stable because of Sherry. Sherry's the one who told him he had to get his act together or else well, yeah. he should leave. Right, well, right. and he, didn't, he, he could have told her that at the beginning. He'd be like, I'm stable now. And the reason why is I found this woman that like, has really helped, you know, and she's like... <laughs> exactly. Right, right, right. Well, right. Like, but, when he said, because I'm living with Sherry and she's the one who kind of put me down this path. Well, That's I think what like, I was going to say that, you know, that when yeah. he comes there and he gets out of the car and he gives Rory the book, he could have, you know, said, you know, all of this stuff is because I'm living with somebody and we're, we're together. I think they would have still flirted with each other. She definitely would not have kissed him. I think plus, I was going to say plus, she was inquiring about his life and it's like he 
told her everything except that. Well, I think, like, the it's reason... For sure, yeah. Well, I think, like, um, part of the reason why I brought this up is because, like, Chris and Lorelai, like a lot of people I know, including myself, um, always have those people that, like, you can just continually be yourselves with no matter what ta- how much time has passed, no matter who they're with, and things like that. And I think Lorelai and Christopher will always be those people to each other, regardless of who's in their lives. Um, and I think, like, with the whole thing of, like, flirting, I mean, that's just Chris, which just makes him even more charming. But also it's Lorelai, who he's known since she was six. And the kiss, like, the kiss, and, like, not telling her about Sherry until after, I think, like, even if he didn't want to admit it to himself, I think, like, he kind of likes the fact that, like, oh, like, I love having both of them at my, um, not back and call, but, um, like. I don't read into it like that. I think that he likes Lorelai still. Even though yeah, he's, course, yeah. even though he's with Sherry, I think that he likes Lorelai. He loves her. No, he no, I think so too. But he, she's been turning him down for so long, he doesn't see her as an option anymore. So he went. Oh, he does. He just settled. settled. <laughs> I think Christopher is so selfish, and I know my friend Katie's rolling her eyes right now because she loves Christopher. But I just feel like his whole life is he wants what he wants when he wants it. And even when Lorelai's like, I looked at the map, like, I feel like in his head, he's like, okay, could I hook up with Lorelai and she not know about Sherry? Like, I just, I think I hate him. Sorry. Here, here, me. Well, I but he didn't. Him, but wait, 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 but Maggie, like, Maggie, 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 but he didn't, though. He could have, but he didn't. But there was a moment of hesitation where I feel like he probably thought about it. Right, but there could be a moment of hesitation. And whether you act on it or not determines, like, I don't know. I get it. I get what you're saying, but well, he, he exactly. already told Rory, so he knew he couldn't lie because Rory knew. So I well, don't know. yeah, but like I think that's yeah, like, but they like, still could have had sex at the house, and Rory wouldn't have known. I mean, it was we're kind of foreshadowing. We're kind of foreshadowing. foreshadowing what? Sorry, Sasha, but I just need to make a point that it was a deliberate omission on his part to show up with the Volvo and talk about the work and talk about moving to Boston and the yes, yes, yes. yes. Yes, Mary. Okay. Yeah, yes. I'm nodding like my head's going to fall while I'm a bobblehead right now. Yes, but I can have three. Yeah. I, I agree with you. I think, that he, I think that he wanted to enjoy flirting with somebody who he has feelings with all weekend, which would not have been possible had he mentioned Sherry at the beginning. But what he wasn't prepared for was going that extra step of like having sex with her, even, you know, indulging in a kiss with her. And once that happened, he felt bad. And he mentioned it. Yeah, here's my thing about that whole thing. I mean, I'm so contradicting myself when I say this. But sometimes a kiss is harmless. But on the other side, for me, it, like, quoting um, Dawson's Creek here, a kiss always means, no, watch your heel. A kiss always means something. But, like I said, Chris and Lorelai will always be that person for each other, the person that they can always flirt with and be each other no matter what happened. Yes, Chris wanted to flaunt his successes because he finally got his crap together. And yes, Lorelai probably saw that and be like, oh, well, he's now kind of doing what I wanted him to. Um, Since the fight, maybe something can happen. And then um, you saw her face after he mentioned Sherry. And then she was like, well, damn, okay. Um, but, I mean, Chris loved it. Chris was, like, relishing in the fact that, like, he has a girlfriend in Boston. And then Rory's mother, who um, you can definitely tell she still has feelings for, um, both both of them are, try- are like, trying to sweet talk him and stuff like that. He's loving it. Any guy who has two women in his life kind of flirting with him and trying to, like pursue him is gonna love it you're <laughs> I, I agree he enjoys it but um <laughs> i i don't know. i have a slightly different perspective i was gonna say i don't know that you can say that any guy loves that but okay not any thank guy. you chris because I, I, okay. I do think that chris. christopher does enjoy that lorelei still has somewhat of an interest in him and i do think that he still has a flame for it burns for her so to say shall we say bridgerton style but um, he can't do anything Ooh, about her. But I think that that's the reason. I think Amen. that's the reason why he enjoys it. 
because he has feelings for Lorelai. And so because he has feelings for Lorelai, he enjoys the reciprocation of those feelings, something that he knew he was going to be getting this weekend. And he knew that he would probably put a dent in it in that reciprocation of feelings. Probably he felt like harmless reciprocation because we would just be sort of flirting and that was about it. He left, remember, basically feeling like he was a loser, like he was not good enough, that he didn't have what it took to to be, you know, to be what, you know, the type of man for her and somebody that could be in her life, right? So he's coming back to it, you know, suddenly he's got all of these things that he can kind of point to as like, you know, being somebody that may, that potentially she, that she could like. And I, I actually but, just but don't, I just, I just don't think that he was expecting that it would go much further based, just based on their last, their last, uh, um, interaction together before he left and all that. But where he, he proposed, he, John. Yeah, when he so proposed, like, I think you I go think from that, proposing to not expecting anything when you see them the next time. Well, at the same yeah, time, I think like, so. I think I think that you know you get let you get told no, I don't want to marry you, and you're you're you need to get your life together. Essentially, I think he comes back thinking like, look, I I love this woman, but she'll never be interested in me. Um, but I, but I mean, I absolutely still have feelings for her and I enjoy the reciprocation of those feelings. I have things that I want to tell her about that I'm proud of that I think she'll be proud of. But yeah, probably from the get go thought if I mention Sherry, that probably changes our whole dynamic and I lose not the potential to like have sex with her or, have, you know, make out with her, but I lose maybe all of that like her, her like being proud of me and like the, you know, the, the flirtation and all of that. And in his mind, he probably thought, I mean, I can't say for sure, but I'm just saying, you know, I'm just throwing this out as a possibility. And there's a, there it's somewhere in the world, there is the possibility that this could be that he's thinking, I don't expect anything more from this. I believe that this is harmless. And that only when he realized like, oh, she's actually suddenly and I'm I'm going to guess he was probably not expecting that she was going to be like that forward with him because the last that they spoke, he, you know, he basically got the message like, no. And, and, and so, so I think it was at that point that he realized like, oh, no, oh, no, I screwed up. I'm, I should not have been doing this. John, I'm getting a bro super hose feeling from you right now. To oh, what? The free hill. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> close of a bro. <laughs> It's I, I, I don't know this reference. I've never watched. Wrong one for you know. I don't. But, I'm sorry. I was just giving it out there for Tasha. I know it's back with Tasha. Um, but uh, but yeah. I mean, I just I think that um, uh, I mean, I can see how that would be. I mean, because that was absolutely a horrible moment for for Lorelai. But I think he understood that it was a horrible moment. I think that he he felt bad. I don't think that he was. He was meaning. I, I don't. I don't see him as this guy that's like, I love it that these two women are are into me. I'm, you know, it's just I don't for whatever it. reason. I'm just I'm not seeing it. Before Sherry breaks her finger, <laughs> <laughs> when Christopher proposed to Lorelai, that episode, he asked in the beginning. He said he was going to stay for a while. He wanted to spend time with Rory. The second Lorelai turns him down, he turns and he cuts and runs. Instead of still sticking around, because she said she wasn't ready to, ma- she she wasn't going to marry him because he wasn't ready. She didn't say that in the future she wouldn't be ready. She just said right at that point it wasn't going to happen. So I think when he came back, he kind of was. Uh oh, I have poor connection. I didn't know if I lose lost you or not. No, yeah. you're still there. I heard everything. You're good. So when when he comes back and he's like the second he comes he should have said that he's with somebody she still would have flirted because that's who she is with him they are he so close too. but I I, I, he, I it just drives me nuts that he didn't say in the beginning I don't think he thought that you know something was going to happen because I don't think he's the kind of guy who would have cheated on the person he was with <laughs> but hush <laughs> but I do think that he, he, he she is his guiding
shooting star. She loves he loves her and she is on that pedestal. He so wants to make her proud. Okay, show of mics, show of mics here. Who all thinks that that uh Christopher was hoping for a kiss? Who all thinks that he was not expecting a kiss and a surprise? I don't think he was expecting. Are we a watching kiss. the same show? Let's not, <laughs> let's not forget that since he since he proposed and he's been gone, she got engaged to somebody else. She was going to marry somebody else, and then that fell through. And so she's just out of this engagement. And then she he mentions it, and she goes, "Well, I'm good, and let's talk about it." So to me, that's very fresh. And she's still hurting over her last relationship, her broken engagement. And so he comes back and yeah, the flirting, but Freedom. I don't know. I, I don't think that he had, uh, I don't know. I just don't well, think that he had these, that he was hoping for a kiss because he would have, he would have kissed her. He would have gone through with it. I mean, I know he kissed her, but he would have, I think that the fact that she was Google maps and, and trying to plan for the future caught him by surprise. I well, think he I always, always hoped for a kiss, but then he realized he shouldn't. I mean, well, I maybe think... I'm just taking this a little kind of straight about it, but maybe he just didn't want to bring it up and make it kind of a sore topic for his daughter's weekend. And he, you know, didn't want it to turn into anything. And, you know, he mentioned Sherry, you know, because he wanted to be faithful to Sherry. And he told Lorelai right away it's not like they kissed the entire weekend and then brought it up at the end I you know I think it was just he was there for his daughter and you know why does it have to be anything more also maybe Lorelai well, was horny right. and wanted a one-night stand and now she's just tracking him well, because okay. she's you know she has a kid with him and wants to know how close and how often you know oh. they could hook up okay. if nothing was there well, and they hooked up last okay. time with no with no part of a future. It was just kind of like a one and done. And so, um, I don't know. Right. I, a, a hookup. I, I, if he was a reader, so, she, she just broke off the engagement, and now she uh, knew she could get something from Chris. All right. I'm so leaving anyone going to – I don't agree with that. Um, Chris, what I'm leaving in two minutes. So can I Tasha, make my last Tasha, comment? Tasha, yeah, l l let's hear what your uh, your thoughts are on. Oh, okay. So, oh, like I've mentioned a couple times before, Chris and Lorelai will always be those people for each other. I have that person, regardless of who we're with. And coming from experience, I mean, not this kind of experience, but like, I think one of the reasons why Chris probably didn't tell her until after the kiss, like. He wanted it. Like, he wanted a kiss, no matter, like, what the earlier scene put. Um, said he wanted the kiss because he always liked um, being available for Lorelai, no matter what type of situation that he's in. And I think, like, for Lorelai, and I think, like, this kind of, not for every person, but sometimes when women find out that the person that they were with in whatever way is taken they're more attractive and it's happened to me yeah. before and things like that. And I mean, I'm not going to like spoil it. Um, but I mean, things happen. Like Chris probably didn't just go there just for Rory because he has flaked out and we haven't seen that because like, we don't know the entire backstory of him. Um, but just from what like Lorelai has said, like, um, he hasn't always been there for her, even before the series started and stuff like that. And then he was so quick to say, yes, like, yes, he probably wanted to be there for Rory. But at the same time, it's Lorelai and Chris. He wanted to be there to be there with her. And we'll we'll just see how, like, this whole thing with Sherry works. And I'm not going to mention him more than that. But, yes, that's my whole thing on that. Just looked hot. He was hilarious. I love the Metallica shirt. Great band. But I got to go. I love you all. I will be back tomorrow. Bye, Tasha. Bye. Night, Tasha. Thanks Night. for, thanks Night, for Tasha. coming. Love you, girls. Good night. Love you. Bye. bye. Night. Hey, I have Wendy, I saw, you, I saw you flash in. Yeah, I got to address the elephant in the room as far as I don't, I don't care if he accepted it or didn't accept it. I just, what bugs me is that despite, you know, whatever happens between he and um, Lorelai is kind of, 
pointless or doesn't matter because just because she turned down his wedding or marriage proposal, yet he just falls off the face of the planet and wasn't his whole thing that he wanted to be more involved in Rory's life. So yeah, this was I, this was basically Sherry's point, and it's actually a really good one I, that I hadn't really considered until 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 you made it, which is which is true. I mean, you know, he could have just stayed and been like, okay, it's not about me and Lorelai. It's about I should be a better dad to my daughter, and he didn't. And, and why? And it was her. She was the one who called to invite him to the the debutante ball. It wasn't actually Rory. Right, that did the calling. So that was the other thing. It's like, yeah. okay, so who? And they didn't know yes he to? moved. Who was he saying yes to? Yeah, exactly. His phone number wasn't even in service anymore. So, yeah, you can tell I'm not a big. Fan. Yeah. So like, <laughs> so so are you feeling like the Oxford English Dictionary was not for Rory? It was for Lorelai. Um, you know, I'm. I, it was for Rory, but it was also with a, with a big neon light. <laughs> basically, well, I mean, it was basically yeah, him was saying, saying, "Look, I can buy her." I, look, yeah, I, I make, I'm making good now. I'm making good on the thing I couldn't do before that you didn't think, you know, that you were making me feel bad about before. Look, I'm, I'm better now, right? So, you know, yeah, Rory got her Oxford English Dictionary, but you know, I think that if you look deep down into Christopher, that wasn't for Rory's satisfaction. It was for, it was for his satisfaction as it relates to Lorelai, yeah. for sure. Yeah. I mean, you know, look, I mean, he, he, I, it's, I just, it's just a hallmark of good writing, but he, the, the character is, is really flawed in that way. Um, there's no question about it that he's, he's not, a, he's not a dad. <laughs> you know I mean, he's like, he's not in his daughter's life and he's, you know, he's not, and there's no question about it. He's still, he's still, is into Lorelai and there's I mean one thing's for sure he's not that into Sherry <laughs> you know I mean he's probably going to be with Sherry for a while for a while longer but that's not who he's going to be with for the rest of his life it's, it's I mean at least that's how it feels right now if you are into somebody like deeply 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 into somebody somebody that trumps your other love then you do mention them at the very beginning of the of the conversation. The fact that he didn't really says a lot about how he feels about Sherry. Yeah, definitely. Are you still Team Christopher? I am Team Christopher. I am Team Christopher, and the reason why is because I want I am rooting for him to be better. You know, because I think that he could be a good dad, and I think that he is that he does have great chemistry with um with Lorelai. He may never, he may never become the, he may never reach the potential that I think he could reach. Um, and that might just be part of the conflict of the show, but, um, but I'm rooting for that character. I, I, I like him and I like their, I like their chemistry with one another. Um, I see the selfishness. I see, you know, that he's not, uh, 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 that he's not an ideal father, but for whatever reason, maybe, you know, I see flaws in him that remind me of flaws in myself that I, that I root for him. And he's also really handsome. Oh, he True. is hot. That's true. <laughs> I love him. Sorry. <laughs> but he's still trash. <laughs> I just, I think of the timeline. The last time they saw each other in person, she refused his proposal saying, you're not ready. You haven't settled down. You can't even buy a book. And then the first time he sees her, he shows her that he was able to fill every single criticism that she made of him. But he doesn't tell her that the reason is another woman also told him to do the same thing. Yeah, because he likes her. Because he wants her to. Because he wa He because if he does that, then then obviously like. Lorelai doesn't think much of him more than what she thought about him before. Can or I just be proud of him? Is he trying to earn everything that he said when he proposed? I think he's trying to prove it. I think so. I think he's trying to prove it because I think he really, I think, I think he, lo he, he still loves Lorelai. And I think ultimately that's the person that he wants, uh, not, not necessarily wants in his life, but he wants their adoration. He wants, Lorelai to love him 
the way that he loves her. Right. Even though he's with Sherry, even though he's not going to leave this relationship that he's currently in. Right. He still wants the person that he actually has deep feelings for to have those same feelings for him. And he knows that there's all these things that stand in the way. And he's obviously not seeing the most obvious, which is what, you know, Sherry and Wendy brought up, brought up, which is like, hey, why don't you stop focusing on me for a second and start focusing on your daughter? You know, and and maybe through that, you will gain my admiration. Which is actually what happened. Like, she admired him for coming to the weekend and being there for Rory. So it's yeah, yeah. an obvious way, and he totally ignores it. Well, he does, it's not that he ignores it. I think that he just doesn't see it. Like, that's kind of the, that's sort of the difference. Like, I, I, like I, I choose to see the character as flawed in the sense that he, he's incapable of seeing it right right now. I mean, I hope I hope at some point he's able to see it better. I mean, I don't know. You all do know, but uh, um, you know, from my perspective, watching the series, I root for him because I say you can't see this thing that is so obvious. I really hope you do because I think there's a good person in you, Sherry. When Lorelai calls him and invites him. When they hang up and she tells Rory that he's coming, they give percentages on whether or not he's going to follow through. He seems to be the kind of guy that'll tell you what you want to hear and doesn't follow through with it. It just drives me crazy. Definitely. And this is what I was getting at like a couple nights ago when I was talking about um, why Rory was like so crushed about the um, the the proposal not working out between Lorelai and, and uh, Max uh, because she was finally going to get some stability in her life because, you know, as I had said, like Christopher does like what Christopher does, like he goes, you know, like there's a 50, 50 chance you'll see him and there's a 50, 50 chance that you won't. So like, that's what I was getting at there. So, yeah. <laughs> hey, but guys. I feel like this might be, this might be based on more of Christopher because as of right now, I haven't really seen, had this sense of a guy who sometimes is there or sometimes isn't he's been in uh i believe three episodes of the of the series you know two of them was him coming to town i felt like he was there the entire time he didn't let he didn't he didn't like um like he didn't disappoint anybody while he was there he was basically essentially told like it's not going to work and then at that point he left like you know, and, and, and I do understand that that is leaving your daughter in that moment. Um, but I haven't really seen this guy who, like, makes promises and then breaks them, which is what we are given, you know, L- L- Lorelai kind of gives us that sense that, like, like what? You're, you're actually going to come and you promise you're going to come. And, and then he comes and he participates the whole time. And there might be more stuff coming where the guy says he's going to do something and then just doesn't show up or, or completely flakes out or disappoints any people. But as of right now, I haven't seen it yet. But in both times, he makes claims to things that he doesn't earn. In the first episode, he lets people think, or like his family think, that his business is doing great when it's not. And then in this episode, he lets Lorelai think he put his life together when it's not true that it was just like his own motivation. So yeah, he may not be flaky or you have may not have seen him be flaky, even though they refer to it. Like these two characters supposedly know him very well. So we we can assume from their experiences that they've seen him be flaky. But we have seen him be um what's the word duplicious? Duplicious duplicious something like duplicious. <laughs> duplicious. Yeah. Tiffany yeah, I get, I, I get it. T- Duplicitous. Duplicitous, yeah. Tiffany, did you want to say something? Yeah, I just have a few thoughts. I'm definitely not a Chris fan. And, and so, like, firstly, like what you were saying about how, like, he shows up and then he starts coming, you know, when he's supposed to be coming. But I think, you know, they don't really say this in the show, but it's almost like she's grown up now, so now it's, it's fun the, the work is done, like the hard work is done. So it's just a little bit easier to be coming and dealing with a teenager than, you know, you may be stuck, you know, changing diapers. <laughs> and um, I always felt bad for, for Lorelai and Rory because he was able to get it together for Sherry. Like he wasn't right. able to get it together for them. Yeah. 
And so that, you know, that's just like a selfish thing. And I feel like bringing the book for Rory wasn't really like a gift for her. It was more just like his ego, selfish thing too. Yeah, so, that I definitely, that I definitely agree with for sure. That didn't feel like it was for Rory. I felt like it was for him and for Lorelai and, and letting her see him. Um, yeah, I mean, look, I, a, a, a lot of good points. I mean, there, there's no question about it. The character is, has got issues. Um, he's a lot, he's certainly a liar. <laughs> like that, that's for sure. Um, he's somebody who lies because he's scared because he, because he's trying to hide parts of himself that he doesn't like. Um, uh, I haven't seen the flakiness, but it's true. The characters have referred to it. So you kind of have to have to imagine, I guess that it, that it happens. Um, I'm waiting to see it so that I can, as you know, I can, so that I can experience it for myself and, you know, and, and, and make, um, make my own judgment on that. But that's a pretty strong, that's a pretty strong argument, you know, like that he, that he got it together with Sherry, but what if he didn't get it together with Sherry? Like, what if that's also a lie? Like, what if some of this that's happening here with Sherry is just more of Christopher trying to hide who he actually is? Like, he may not be all that into Sherry. So, you know, the idea that he hasn't been around for Rory's, you know, for most of Rory's life. Yeah, that, you know, that shows a, a, a guy who doesn't really have what it takes to be a father and, and to um, and to ultimately be a husband. Right. But he may not have gotten that together with Jerry. That might, that might be a, just another put on that he's that, that he's got here. I don't know, like, if he had been able to get it together for Lorelai, like, when they were younger, I don't, I still don't know that it would have worked out. I don't, I don't think that she would have wanted that still. I think she needed to go off on her own and find her own way and carve her own path. Agree. Who said agree? Me, Hannah. I agree, and I think it's hard for him to separate Chris, the father, from Chris um, in his relationship with Lorelai, because I think at this point, you can't, he can't just be, come to town and just be Rory's dad, because when we met him in the series, that was his first visit to Stars Hollow. He had never been there, and so I don't even know if we know how, how often he saw Rory or if he did at all. And so his relationship is turning fresh and new, and he wants to be a dad, and he's struggling with that, but with him and Lorelai, really, they, I'm assuming they hadn't seen each other since they were 16 and the, and the strip turned pink and she went one way and he went another. So I think that they're still kind of dealing with their feelings and their relationship because did they even, I mean, did they have a proper breakup or, or did they process things or is it just time went on and now they're grown ups? but those, those, uh, that attraction still there. And so now trying to navigate for him, I, I don't think he could come to town and just be a dad because he still has feelings for her. He still loves her. I agree. And I think I, I like your point about did they even have a proper breakup? I mean, we saw how she dealt with the Max situation. So if that's, you know, representative at all of what happened what? with Chris, like, I think we have to assume that she basically just left. Um, you know, she, we know, um, Actually, I can't say that because that's going to be a spoiler, but, um, you know, I, I think we have to assume that there probably wasn't a proper breakup there. I I love, we don't know that she just left Max either, but she could have broken up with him, there, but they just didn't, they just didn't show a scene. I, I don't feel like she just ditched him. I feel like they had a proper breakup. They just didn't show that scene. I love Lorelai, but I hate that scene in this episode when she starts flirting with him only because I know that she just broke up with Max and I just want to go, lady, cool your jets for a little bit. Maybe that's part of the reason why you picking the wrong guy. It's been a few weeks yeah. at least because they had the road trip and then they went back to school. So it's been a few weeks. Well, that's still really quick. <laughs> Maybe. Well, and it's not like that. it was like a new guy either. Like she's known him all her life. I, I mean, I, I could, I would feel that way if it was like somebody just random that she just met. Like, oh hey. <laughs> but I mean, she's known him for a long time. You know. I think he's part of the reason she realized she shouldn't be with Max as well, though, because 
that's mm-hmm. who she called yeah. after her mother's I, story. Absolutely. Yeah, agree. Agree. Very true. Does Christopher care about Rory? I don't <laughs> feel like he really does. He loves her because it's his kid, but it, I think he thinks of her as just something that it keeps Lorelai in his life. Well, and as a parent, it's one thing to love your child, and then it's another thing to actually put in the hard work that takes to raise a child. And so does he care about her? Yes. Does he care about her enough to actually be there and, and you know, more than just a dictionary, you know, to be there day in and day out? No, I don't think he cares enough. I think it's more a question of he doesn't actually know Rory enough to care about her yet. I think he's still discovering Laura, Rory. So to him, she's an idea, and he's slowly putting together the realization of what she is as a person. Yeah, that makes that makes a heck of a lot of sense. Wow, I, the, the the post show discussion got real interesting once we started focusing on those two characters. <laughs> I thought we were mostly going to be talking about about um, Emily and Richard. Because I was just so taken by that whole storyline, but um, but this was really this was really cool. Where does this show rank for you so far? Hi. Um. This, what what word? The you mean the series Gilmore Girls or this particular yeah, episode? Of, well, out of all the episodes you've seen so far, is this one of your higher? Like you like it more? Kind of middle of the road? I'd probably say that this one will probably this one's likely to fade from for me like in terms of just like because I was actually thinking about that what you know yesterday I was like what what's gonna what's gonna specifically because I know all of you have like favorite episodes like oh I couldn't miss that one that that one I had to be on the couch for and so I was thinking yesterday like what will that you know what how will I determine that you know and I think that the answer is I'm just going to remember the episode. Like, like the episode is just going to stick in my mind. Like when I think about season one, I think about the episode between Rory and Dean and the car and all of that. So just, I, it's like, it just comes to mind almost immediately. Right. So I, so I just know that that episode stuck with me. Um, the last episode that we just saw with, with Jess, right. There was just so many things about that that I'm probably never going to forget. Um, whereas this episode, I could see this episode starting to fade after a while. Like, like just, I, I just don't totally remember it, which probably means that it's somewhere in, in the middle. I, I didn't, I, it was certainly wasn't an episode that I was like bored, bored at any time with. I, there were, like I said, there were the whole thing with Emily and, and Richard. I, I just absolutely loved. I didn't really get that deep into the whole, um, Lorelai and Christopher thing until we got into this discussion, which has potentially altered my feelings for the episode it, it may actually be uh because of this this discussion this episode might stick in my mind a lot longer i don't know but that's that's sort of how i've been going about the, the series is like it's the the episodes that really like land with me and 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 that i can't shake like the like i can't shake the moments i think are like my favorite episodes that's a good one John. Do you want to talk about yeah. that last scene there with Emily and Lorelai? Yeah, that was pretty. <laughs> uh, that was pretty awesome. That that was that was a pretty powerful scene. What are your thoughts on that? I just I felt like it shows uh, an understanding that Lorelai's developing an understanding and a connection with her mother that we hadn't seen. It's like a maturity in Lorelai and. Um, a realization, or like, not a realization, but like, uh, her mother is not her enemy in this episode, and it's one of the very few that we've seen so far where her mother, her mother is not her enemy, and she goes out of her way to try and be a friend, which is brand new. And what about Emily's reaction? I mean, I, I didn't feel like Emily pushed that away. I felt like Emily was was seriously like I think you're serious here and I mean, did you guys notice the eye thing <laughs> the way her eyes lit up a little oh, bit oh definitely it got warm <laughs> definitely they like glimmered it was mm-hmm. oh, adorable I, yeah. I, I think she just couldn't believe that Laurel I actually came to her right but I mean I but I also took that to be like I, I 
I sort of interpreted that to mean that 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 Emily was happy about it, not in like a like a selfish Emily way, but that she was actually like, I would really, really love to have somebody that I could that I could talk to about some of this stuff. Absolutely. I agree. Yeah, I think I think up until now, Lorelai has always seen her parents as a unit, like, you know, like they're just my parents. They're both this. They're both like they kind of are in the same category as like just the same person in a way. And I really feel like this is a moment where um, Emily is start. Well, Lorelai is starting to see them as two separate people with two separate lives who have different priorities. And Emily in that scene, like, it seems like she feels seen for the first time, you know, as a separate entity to her husband. Yeah, for sure. What did you think of Dean's cameo? Uh, I thought Dean was great in this episode. I like I like I felt like Dean was less of the clingy, whiny thing, smiley, you know, yeah, yes, ma'am, thing that we've been seeing since the beginning of the season. Uh, he just seemed he seemed cool. So What's much with it. battle box. I don't like. I don't know how many times they mentioned that she's got to watch battle bots with him. I don't even yeah, know what I that is. Like, is that a knockoff Transformers or like? No, no. You, know, you, you guys, you guys show. don't remember battle bots? I remember people, battle bots. I have no idea what that is. They people, were they, they were like engineers. I and know because I'm an fight. engineer. I mean, they were they <laughs> they designed robots and they. Battle. Very intelligent people. They, battle. they, they battled it out in like an yeah, arena they, type they thing. They put them in the ring and they would fight and declare a win. Yeah. Think of robot can't flat But what's the what's the problem there? I love robots, so what's the problem there? That was I don't think he doesn't like the show and he loves it, but so she agreed to watch it for him to do to be her escort. She agreed to watch BattleBots with him. I think it's hilarious, just kind of like the way that he was like, oh, like you know, tails and like my coat and like I gotta wear gloves and a cummerbund. Um and this is like one of my favorite episodes because um of the debutante ball. Um I know that it's not really clear on my profile picture, but like I had a, a quinceañera, but like I had to like move it a year so it's technically like quinceañera to sixteen sort of thing. Um and so it really got me thinking on like that ordeal because um the way that Laura like kind of explained the debutante the debutante ball to Rory, it was like, oh, like you're just prancing around and like showing that you're of marriageable age, and it it made me rethink of the implications that a quinceañera, like something that I had, um, gives out, you know, to different people. Um, but I just thought it was funny the way that he complained that he had to wear a tux and a, a cummerbund and stuff because um, I had a escort and escort in um, quotes here. Uh, it was a, a chambelan. That's, that's what they're called in, in quinceañeras, and it was my best friend. And he was like, oh, yeah, like, I'll do it. And, you know, like, my brother had to get dressed up in a tux. Uh, my dad had to get dressed up in a tux, and they were, like, all chill about it. <laughs> so I just thought it was funny, him complaining, like, oh, I have to do this? You know, and Rory had to, like, say, like, oh, Neil Young wears one. Like, you can do it. <laughs> but that's just well, well, wait a second. What if she had asked Jess? <laughs> like, don't you think Jess would have been equally, like, uh... Oh, no, she definitely is. No right way. Now. Yeah. Like not. I mean, I I don't know. I, I I feel like it's I feel like it's it's being a little hard on the character if, if he's being judged on whether or not he likes the idea of escorting her to something no, I, like this. Was, I mean, because like my like no one in my family who was a part of like my event ever complained about it. They're like, oh, okay. and then they'll just do it. Right. But so I just. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, it's to, a very weak. The, the whole thing is very weird and very out of character for Rory, but she's really, she's only really doing it because she knows it means something to her grandmother. Right. And so ultimately yeah. she's only really doing it because it means something to Rory and asking her to watch battle bots is like, I mean, I think that that's probably just like an easy way for him to like, to try and kind of make it feel like a compromise. I don't think that he wouldn't have, Done, I think he would have still done it if she was like, I'm not watching BattleBots, you know, but 
I, I don't know. I like this idea that this guy has his own things that are not like the all of the the fantasies of what Rory would find the perfect guy. And that, you know, there's a bit of like, meet me halfway here, right? Like, Jess is already like out of the gate. He's like a Dickens lover. And like, you know, it's like all these things that are just like the flawless, perfect fantasy of of the type of guy that she should want. And I feel like, I feel like, you know, I mean, it's similar to, it reminds me a lot of what you said the other night, Mary, where you said that, uh, or what was it you, what, yeah, you, wait, was it you, Mary, that said that you and your husband made the deal where you would watch X-Files and he would watch Gilmore Girls? Yeah. But he, but he completely did not watch Gilmore Girls, but you watched all of X-Files? Yep. <laughs> and you know what? And this is the same criticism we gave him in the last episode: is that he didn't. He sat on the bus stop and he didn't have anything to do except wait for Rory. And now we're criticizing him for having something that he wants to share with Rory, right? <laughs> right. Um, well, everybody, I'm going to actually have to run here. Um, but we. Uh, this was uh, another fun, a fun night, and uh, I, per- I especially love post-show discussion. I, I, I feel like I enjoyed the post-show discussion on this episode more than the episode, but, um, but it was still a, a great episode. They're all, all really great. Um, we're back tomorrow morning uh, at 8 a.m. Pacific time, um, which is uh, what? 11. Is that, a, is that yeah, 11, a, Eastern. 11 Eastern? That's 10 central. Central. 10 central. Woo, woo. Um, and uh, my second shot tomorrow, so hopefully I'll be feeling okay. My husband just got his tonight. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, Bye wow, you. that's good. I I'm, got mine today. I am not looking forward to mine. Mine's next Tiffany, week. Tiffany and uh, I are I should mention he got the same first. <laughs> I don't know what the seconds are going to be like, but we yeah, have all got in first yesterday, too. I kicked it in 12 hours, but I kind of had to. I just muscled down some Tylenol on, after shot number two, and, and, uh, and then last weekend I went to Disneyland. <laughs> um, I've got, we've got like Gatorade stocked up and we've got Tylenol. We're like ready for it because. What kind lack. are you getting? What kind did you get, get John? Moderna. Moderna. Yeah, that the one you'll get sick. My husband got sick. My yeah, husband got sick at all. Moderna, the rest of the family had Pfizer. Like we got Moderna the first shot. Like we got our first shot. And we got both got really sick. I got really sick. That's My why. Really that, sick. That's why next. That's why next weekend I've just I've just gone ahead and not scheduled um, not scheduled uh, episodes um, for next weekend uh, just because I have this feeling that I'm going to get sick and not be able to do it. And I'd rather just have it off the schedule than say, hey, everybody, I have to cancel tonight. A um, good plan, John. Yeah. Moderna kicked my fishy. Yeah, it's I'm not looking forward to it. Um, all right, so we're, we're back tomorrow morning. Hopefully you all will join, join me or some of you will. Um, and maybe we'll get some folks uh, overseas uh, to come and, and hang with us as well. Uh, and I'm looking forward to it. Is, it, is it. is it an exciting episode? It's a fun episode. It's not like, it's not really exciting. I honestly it's don't know. What's the title of the next episode? Like, like Mother, Mother, Like Daughter. Daughter. Oh, yeah, it's a cute episode. It's, yeah, you know, it's, oh, yeah. it's a good morning episode, John. It's a good, good. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It, John. I, knowing your character preferences, I think he's going to like it. Awesome. I agree. Um, all right, everybody. Thank you, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Bye, John. Good night. 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 Good night